ASTM C31 is the standard practice for making and curing concrete test specimens in the field. This standard is used for making, curing, transporting, and protecting concrete test specimens in the field. When specimens are to be field cured, they should be stored as near as possible to the structure that is going to be put into place. They should also be kept at the same temperature and moisture conditions as the structure. And finally, they should also be stripped at the same time that the formwork is removed. And that's because field curing is usually used to determine whether or not a structure is ready to be put into place. It may also be used for comparison with standard cured cylinders, or it may be used for comparison with in-place concrete testing methods, or adequacy of curing and protection for form removal and shore removal times. Standard curing, on the other hand, is usually used for acceptance of strength specification, mix proportioning, and quality control. The equipment and tools required for this procedure are going to depend upon the specifications at the project, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the equipment and tools that may be required. 6x12 cylinder molds, 4x8 cylinder molds, and beam molds. The inside surfaces of the beam molds shall be smooth. The sides, bottom, and ends shall be at right angles to each other and shall be straight, true, and free from warpage. Maximum variation from the nominal cross-sectional area shall not exceed one-eighth of an inch for molds with depths or breadths of six inches or more. Cylinder molds shall conform to ASTM C470 specification for molds for forming concrete test cylinders vertically. You'll also need a tamping rod. The 5 8 of an inch tamping rod shall be at least 4 inches longer than the depth of any mold, but not more than 24 inches in overall length. Furthermore, at least one end of the rod, the tamping end, shall be rounded to a hemispherical tip of the same diameter. With the exception of the diameter, the 3 8 of an inch tamping rod shall meet the same specifications. You may need an internal vibrator. The diameter of the internal vibrator shall not be more than a quarter of the cylinder mold or more than a quarter the width of any beam mold. Furthermore, the frequency of the internal vibrator shall be 9,000 vibrations per minute. You will need a mallet. The mallet shall weigh 1.25 plus or minus one half pounds and have a rubber or rawhide head. You'll also need finishing tools, a sample container, as well as the tools necessary to perform slump, air, and temperature. And of course, you'll need a scoop. The sample must be obtained in accordance with ASTM C172, sampling freshly mixed concrete. When setting up to fabricate your test specimens, the surface you set up on should be level, rigid, and free of vibration. The molds used in this procedure are going to depend upon our maximum aggregate size. The diameter of our cylinder molds should be three times greater than the maximum aggregate size in our concrete. Therefore, the maximum aggregate size for a 6x12 cylinder is about 2 inches, while the maximum aggregate size for a 4x8 is slightly over an inch. And whenever strength specimens are made, you must also do slump, air, and temperature. If the measured slump of the concrete is less than one inch, then the concrete samples must be vibrated. However, if the measured slump is one inch or over, the concrete can be vibrated or rotted. If rotting is the chosen consolidation method, then each layer of concrete should be rotted 25 times. And each subsequent layer shall penetrate the previous layer by about one inch. 
The first layer should be rotted throughout its depth without forcibly striking the bottom of the mold. When casting a 6x12 cylinder, the mold should be filled in three equal layers, while when casting a 4x8, it should be filled in two equal layers. Also filled in two layers are beams with a width of 6 to 8 inches. Beams with a width greater than 8 inches will have three layers. All beams are rotted once for every two square inches of surface area. When consolidating cylinders by vibration, a 4x8 cylinder is filled in two equal layers and the vibrator is inserted once into each layer. While for a 6x12, it is filled in two equal layers once again. However, now the vibrator must be inserted twice into each layer. When vibrating beams with a width of 6 to 8 inches, the beam mold shall be filled in one layer and the vibrator shall be inserted at intervals not exceeding 6 inches along the center line. For beams with a width greater than 8 inches, the beam shall be filled in two equal layers, and here the vibrator shall be inserted alternately using two lines. And one quick note on light gauge single-use molds that may warp from the use of a mallet. Here, an open hand for consolidation is permissible. For standard curing, your specimens should be moved to their initial place of storage immediately. Here, they should be protected from moisture loss and stored at a temperature of 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. They can stay at this location for up to 48 hours. And remember, your specimens should be stored on a surface which is level to within a quarter of an inch over 12 inches. And to reduce the risk of warpage when using light gauge single-use molds, lift the mold from the bottom and support it with a trowel or similar device. Upon completion of initial storage, specimens should be moved to normal curing conditions and not simply covered in plastic or left in bags. And remember, for concretes with an expected PSI of 6,000 or greater, the initial curing temperature is tightened to 68 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Always be sure to put the unique batch number or identification on every cylinder. When transporting your cylinders, you want to protect them from jarring, freezing, and moisture loss. And remember, your cylinders cannot be moved until 8 hours after final set, and the maximum transportation time is 4 hours. When preparing for a performance review during an actual examination, you will usually have to cast a 4x8 cylinder or a 6x12 cylinder. Here in this presentation, we're going to go through both. To begin, we're going to add the first layer of concrete. For a 4x8 mold, we're going to fill it to half its volume, while for the 6x12, we're going to fill it to a third of its volume. In either case, we want to move the scoop around the outside perimeter of the mold for even distribution. Now, using a 3 8 inch rod for the 4x8 and a 5 8 inch rod for the 6x12, we're going to rod this first layer throughout its depth 25 times without forcibly striking the bottom of the mold. We also want to move our rod in a spiral motion to be sure to cover the full cross-sectional area of the cylinder. We now want to tap the outside of the mold 10 to 15 times with a mallet or open hand for light gauge single-use molds. After consolidation, we can add our second layer of concrete. For our 4x8, we're going to fill the mold, while for our 6x12, we're going to fill it approximately two-thirds its depth. We can now rod the second layer of concrete with the appropriate rod, making sure that we penetrate the previous layer by about one inch. Once again, tap the sides of the mold with a mallet or open hand. Let's go ahead and finish our 4x8 cylinder. First, we want to screed any excess concrete off the top of the mold. We can now seal our cylinder, 
put the appropriate batch number on the cylinder and move it to its initial place of storage. And now back to our 6x12. We can now add the third layer of concrete filling the mold. Once again, rod this layer 25 times, penetrating the previous layer by 1 inch. Tap the sides of the cylinder 10 to 15 times. Strike the excess concrete off the top of the mold. Then seal, identify, and protect your concrete specimens. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude ASTM C31 making and curing concrete test specimens in the field. Yeah, what's the number? 54593. 54593.